Comments made on the following paid commercial program are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. On the program this week, tax tips with David Ingram, money mercials, and our special guest, Danielle Park. Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox, and this week our special guest is financial analyst, author, and portfolio manager, Danielle Park. Danielle, welcome. Hi, Sterling. Danielle is also an author and uh, just a couple of years ago released this book. It's called Juggling Dynamite, an insider's wisdom about money management, markets, and wealth that lasts. Danielle, it's three years old, and it continues to be as relevant today as it was the day you released it. Yes, I think that's what I'm told by people, and I can see that because it's sort of um, more about human behavior and market history and cycles and things that repeat, so it really doesn't get stale dated. All right, now you're in Vancouver uh, speaking at the World Money Conference. You're also going to speak in Calgary. You're back in Vancouver this summer and then in Montreal and Toronto. You're a popular speaker. I've seen you on television. When you address these conferences, what do you tell people? Well, um, usually, you know, the, the point of the investor conferences is for people to come and get an update on where we may be in a particular market cycle or with respect to certain assets or different types of financial products. That's typically what the money show and these various conferences are held for at mm -hmm. various times in the year. And then they have, you know, people like me to basically come in and talk about uh, some of the macro overarching themes. So uh, just the, an the analysis that we do on a daily basis and to update people on risks and some of the opportunities that we see. Well, how are we doing, Danielle? It's, uh, some people would say it's pretty shaky out there. What's your take? Well, you know, I think it's fascinating right now. There's a real divide going on between Main Street and Wall Street or Bay Street. So you have a stock market that has really gone wildly crazy in the last few months from, you know, sort of depression levels and sentiment last March to euphoric levels this March, but really not broadly participated, right? One of the fascinating things about what happened in the credit crisis in 2008, I think is Joe and Jane uh, Smith got hurt and their confidence was deeply shaken. And so what you see now is the emergency intervention that's gone on around the world has really pumped up asset markets. But if you look at the consumer confidence no numbers, if you look at the spending habits, if you look at the behavior of individuals, um, they aren't feeling very confident still. So I think that that in particular has really accentuated the divide between the stock market and the volatility index, which is showing complacency again, remarkably, one year after great crisis, Sure. You know, the VIX was at 80 last year, now it's 16 again. That's a hell of a change in one year. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you talk to people on the street, I think you note that people aren't feeling very confident, right? Business owners are not feeling very confident. Um, if you talk to, uh, you know, homeowners in Canada, some have been kind of euphoric again of late, but in a lot of places in the, in the world and in the United States, they're not feeling very good about housing yet. So, so sorry, how do you connect the dots then between what you describe as the euphoric activity in the equity markets and Wall Street, Bay Street, versus that diminished confidence on the part of the individual private investor, many of whom got burned and many of whom have withdrawn from the game and are happily sitting on the sidelines? Well, it's, it's pretty typical that after a really bad crisis like that, you see people pull back. What, what I think is missing here is that um, the, the, the agony didn't go on long enough. So some of the people that were doing crazy risk-seeking behavior that led us to the crisis and the big blow up are sort of back at it again. And it's being sort of uh, perpetuated. Now I think Jane and Joe is back at risk of being sucked back into the machine because okay. they're feeling now, maybe they felt good to get out last winter or maybe in the spring or maybe sometime in the last few months. I think lately the pressure is going to come on again where they're starting to feel they're missing out. So this is classic human behavior, right? Where you see something go up so much and suddenly you want back in. Now, 
The point is that price risk right now is extremely high. And one of the things I talk about in Juggling Dynamite is price risk is actually our greatest risk as an investor. So if you buy a great house, but you pay twice what the market value is, it's not a good investment, sure. right? If you buy it for a million dollars and a year later or two later, it's 500,000, it can still be a great house, but it was terrible timing. Now, timing is actually everything when it comes to how we deploy our money. Now, Wall Street and Bay Street like to tell us timings of no effect, right? It's always a good time, according to them. Well, of course. Right. Nothing could be further from the truth. Right. And so I spend a lot of my time trying to educate people on the, uh, the elements of different cycles, long secular cycles, the shorter business cycles, and price metrics and valuations and how that dictates how you actually end up doing. And I think those are the most important themes. If people can really understand that, then I tell them, when things go insane, like of late, in my view, equity prices have gone off the rails again, you need to sort of plug your ears and hum a bit. Otherwise, you're going to be distracted or stressed out, feeling you're missing out, which is exactly the wrong emotions to drive you back into risk assets. Okay, now you talked about people feeling pressured to get back into the game. Where's that pressure coming from? Well, number one is coming because people have a deficit of savings. Mm -hmm. Very interesting article in the Globe and Mail this morning about the Ontario P teacher's pension, right? Very well-known pension. And how they had a big hit in 2008, and they, they had a large gain in 2009, but their deficit has gone enormous again. So just because they made back some of the losses in 2009, they still have a huge funding problem. The, the reality is those funding problems have to be addressed through increased savings, increased contributions. And that's what people are not comfortable with because it means they have to forego present day consumption, right, and save more. And we had a whole generation of people that were trained in the 80s and 90s, don't worry about saving, pile it into the stock market, Wall Street's a genius, sure. we can fix this, we can make you rich. Reality is we've been in a secular bear climate since 2000. We're about halfway through it. And the stock market is going to make a lot less for gains going forward as it has for the last 10 years. And so suddenly the focus comes back on savings again. That's a hard pill for people. So some of them embrace that and go, okay, so I have to spend less and save more. I can do that. Others say, no, that can't be right. Like, uh, you know, who's got a magic pill? Who's sure. got a magic pill? Sure. And that's where people get into trouble.